Now, this is a one of the more rare UFO books in my collection. This is the Cash Landrum UFO Incident by John F. Schusler. I think I'm saying that right. This was originally published in 1998 in Houston, Texas. Now, this is a fascinating, uh, a fascinating UFO case. And if you are into studying UFOs, and especially if you are into studying UFOs from the perspective of political control, and UFOs as a means of um, psychological warfare and things like that, this is definitely a, a really good resource. This is definitely not one of those books that you're just going to sit down and read cover to cover because there's so much. The last, I would say, the last um, third or so, the appendix, all of this is all documentation uh, backing up a lot of what he's talking about in here, about the case in general. So let me rewind a little bit and give you the, the basic case information about this. So this was, this particular UFO incident involved three people. This was a, um, a lady who owned a business, I think, around down in the Piney Woods area of Texas named, I believe her name was Betty... Uh, Betty Cash. Uh, um, I think that's right. And I apologize in advance if I get these names wrong. Um, and in fact, you know, I'm going to just double check while talking. I don't want to butcher, want to do, do, do these people justice here. So Betty Cash, Vicki Landrum, and Colby Landrum. Okay, so you had... Um, they were out driving, I think it was on December 29th of 1980. I think that's right. Um, they were on their way back from playing bingo or something like that down in that Piney Woods area. And that's an area northeast of Houston. So if you pull that up on Google Earth, you'll see that back when this was back in when this happened, that was a pretty desolate area. Now that's that's pretty well developed. There's a lot of little suburbs out in that area. But back when this happened, that was a pretty desolate area they were driving through. And as they were making their way back home, so Colby Landrum, he would, he would probably be about my age now. So, because um, I remember my mom actually telling me about, she heard about this on the radio and her telling me this story probably around 1981 and being like really blown away by the implications of this, even as a child hearing this and going, whoa, that's crazy. Um, so you had Colby Landrum as a kid. I think he would have been about six or seven years old at the time. Um, the his grandmother, Vicky Landrum, and then Betty Cash. And I, I can't remember who was driving or whatever. They were all three in this car, and they noticed a bright light in the sky, and um, it saw it a few times as they were going through these windy roads there, and. Finally, and, and you know, they were a little alarmed by how bright this was and something didn't look right. And then all of a sudden this thing started to, to, to descend into the roadway and stopped and just hovered in the Piney Wood section. is kind of a forested area of Texas and came down to the, you know, treetop level and just hovered there. And they said like fire was coming out of the, the bottom of it, but not like a jet engine, like fire like you know, engine malfunction fire or something like that. And the heat was incredible. So they initially thought maybe they could just drive under this thing and get get away from it. Uh, but the heat was so intense, they're worried if they actually drove under it, they'd be burned and uh, possibly killed by it. That's, that is the level of intense heat and also light coming off of this. They said it was almost like a religious experience. In fact, I think he said his grandmother or um, the... Uh, uh, I think Vicki Landrum or one of them actually started thinking maybe this is the second coming of Christ or something. They were freaking out in a major way. This was huge, intensely bright light and high heat. I think it even warped their dashboard from the heat. And uh, they got out of the car to get a better look at it, but they were all freaking out trying to decide, do we run away? Do we get back in the car? And also, as this is happening, they had also noticed, um, I think the the grandson there, Colby, counted something like 23 Chinook helicopters flying around, um, surrounding this 
flying thing that he, as you see from the, the picture on the cover here, the artist's rendition of this was kind of a diamond shape. And the grandson in later accounts referred to it as, he said it was probably about the size of the, the local water tower. He said that was about the size. So no small object. And the Chinook helicopters seemed to be surrounding this and kind of guiding it away. And then it eventually went away and the, all these Chinooks, those those huge twin rotor helicopters kind of escorted it away. Well, the next day and following days, um, they all got sick. And I think it was uh, Betty Cash who got the most sick um, of basically like radiation exposure. And it's interesting to note that at no point their initial reaction, and I think still to this day, um, the, the grandson, who's I, I presume still alive now, all none of them said it was aliens coming down to try to abduct us. They were all saying, this is some kind of classified project that was flying where it should not have been and basically gave us all a strong dose of radiation. So they all had significant effects of radiation, throwing up, hair loss, um, Enough so that they actually tried to sue the federal government for uh, being put in this, uh, you know, being exposed to radiation by way of this uh, uh, experimental aircraft. Um, the case, I, if I remember all this right, was eventually dismissed. But uh, again, that's not without evidence because they provided a lot of evidence. The, the way the U.S. government got out of it is we have no craft like that. So thank you, drive through. But um, one of the interesting things that happened was they started researching these Chinook helicopters and used that as a starting point to figure out, okay, that's a high concentration of Chinook helicopters that had to come from somewhere. Where did they come from? So they started looking into Gray Army Airfield, I think up by Fort Hood. They started looking at an aircraft, uh, like a, a helicopter assault uh, carrier that was off the coast of uh, 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 the Gulf, Gulf of New Mexico, their uh, coast. Um, but they did a good job of running that down and also running down some of the helicopter assault groups like the Night Stalkers and groups like that that engage in clandestine helicopter activity. And one of the other interesting accounts in this is the, um, at one point, I think they went to an air show and saw a Chinook helicopter there and went inside it. And the guy was actually talking about how they had been in the Piney Woods area um, because a UFO that was in um, a UFO in that area that was uh, uh, had, had suffered some kind of damage or something like that. I forget how he worded it. And they said, oh, great. We're glad because we've been trying to prove this. And when he realized who they were, he clammed up and would not talk to them and actually ushered them away from his helicopter and would not speak to them once he realized the import because, again, legal issue that he was backing up their legal case for being injured by this. Now, where things kind of split on this is much of the UFO fraternity looks at this as proof positive of a, an alien spacecraft that had drifted into US airspace and uh, you know injured these people by way of radiation. Um, there's also another camp of people that's not as well known um, and I would call myself a member of the second camp that says, I personally think that this is proof positive of experimentation with exotic propulsion involving nuclear power, which would make sense why you would not want to advertise to the surrounding population that you have a nuclear reactor flying over their property. Um, and again, that would definitely make sense why you these, uh, these people would be injured by this. Um, and why there was such a huge presence of Chinook helicopters that would have been involved in a highly classified uh, program because had this thing actually been forced to land, they would have to cordon off that entire area, uh, both from a national security perspective to protect this exotic aircraft, but then also uh, you now have a huge uh, radiation hazard in the Piney Woods area. So fascinating case. This is covered a lot of UFO books talk about this case, but this is by far the best treatment of the entire case and some of the best documentation to, uh, to back it up. And a lot of really good research about the helicopters and where they could have originated from. 
Um, the only downside to this, this is not cheap. If you could find a copy, I think the cheapest I've seen one of these go for is around 100 bucks. And I think I got lucky one time. It's like, like buying uh, commodities. One time I saw this dip below $100 and snag this copy. So um, it's an excellent book if you can find it. You know, it's up to you to decide if you think it's worth two or 300 bucks or whatever it's going for. But uh, at the very least, it is a case that should not be forgotten just because it had real physical evidence. And I think the other night when I was pulling this out to review it, um, I did find a, an interview with Colby uh, Landrum when he was still probably just seven or eight years old or so. And uh, you can find that if you search uh, Colby Landrum interview on YouTube. Um, and it's very obvious that the people interviewing him are wanting him to say aliens. And he's like, no, I think this was a secret government aircraft. And it's impressive because here you have a kid who sounds more lucid and sober minded about what he saw and you know, what he witnessed than most adults would be of uh, in today. So fascinating case. And again, personally, I find this really interesting in the in the respect that I think this case really props up the idea of UFOs being used for political control, being used for psychological warfare, and this one just not quite working quite right and, um, and having some you know, technical difficulties along the way. So I'll leave it there, but fascinating book on the case. One of the very, the, I think the only book I know of that, that is a complete book just on this case, but that is the Cash Landrum UFO Incident Three Texans are injured during an encounter with a UFO and military helicopters by John F. Schusler. And again, this is from um, 1998, I believe. I'll just confirm one more time so I can get it right. Yes, this is from 1998. 